When you think of places in the world that are difficult to reach with the gospel, you might think of countries in the Middle East or perhaps South Asia, and you'd be right. But Isak Santiago reminds us that there are places in Mexico that are extremely resistant to the gospel message, like one region called the Circle of Silence. You can't move into these towns just because you want to. You have to have a reason. And if you have a good reason, they will kick you out because nobody moves here. One believer in Jesus lost his job because of his faith. Working for university because they found out he was a Christian. They literally stole his, wiped his bank account. Jesus never promised his followers an easy path. In fact, he told his disciples that the world would hate them. He sent them out as sheep among wolves. Jesus' words came true in the life of the apostles, and they're still coming true today in the lives of his followers around the world. Join host Todd Nettleton as we hear their inspiring stories and learn how we can help right now on the Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network. Welcome again to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. My name is Todd Nettleton. I am in the studio today with Isak Santiago. He is VOM's regional leader for Latin America. Isak, welcome to the Voice of the Martyrs Radio. Thank you for having me. I want to start out by talking about one part of your job because you wear lots of different hats over the course of a month here at Voice of the Martyrs. But one part of your job is outreach, and it is specifically outreach to Spanish-speaking people to help them know the stories of persecuted Christians, to help them be able to be in fellowship with the body of Christ around the world. Talk a little bit about that, what that is, what it looks like, maybe where you're at today and where you'll be a year from now or five years from now in that process. The reason why we started was for that fellowship, that fellowship between our persecuted family and the rest of the world that had no idea what was happening. Sometimes there will be persecution going on in their own country that they are unaware of. I think yes. of pastors in Bogota who don't know what's happening out in the red zones or pastors in Mexico, Mexico City who don't know what's happening in some of the rural areas of Mexico. That's kind of mind boggling for us to think about not knowing what's happening even in your own country. And, you know, that is uh, fascinating, too, because me being Mexican and hearing that, oh, in Chiapas, things are happening. And, and you talk about that, but you never see it. I didn't even pray for them because I had no clue how to do that. So that's something that we are working on right now. In 15 countries in Latin America where we have staff, we have two more countries where we are doing smaller projects, trying to get the testimonies of a persecuted family out indirectly because of the risks inherent to our name. In many countries, they hate the voice of the martyr, especially where we are responding to persecution. And we're okay with that. <laughs> <laughs> but in those countries, we're trying to find ways to get the message of a persecuted family to them. Is that a magazine? Is that a website? Is that you sending people to their churches? How, how are you doing that? We do all of the above. <laughs> <laughs> but something that we're focusing on, we start with pastors. We start one-on-one, -on -one, sit down with them, and share testimonies about the persecuted family. If the pastor connects to their persecuted family, he will open the door to the church. Mm -hmm. And I want to talk about one more thing that's not available yet, but will be soon, sometime next year, and that is VOM Radio in yes. Spanish. VOM Radio has been one of those things that we wanted to put on the field from day one. And that has been in my heart from day one as well, that I know the stories that we tell. I know that the Christians that we have share their testimonies. I know that could be encouraging for someone who speaks Spanish or for a Christian in China who may be enduring persecution themselves, a Christian who speaks Arabic in the Middle East. So from the very first moment that we had Voice of the Martyrs Radio, I have been thinking, boy, how soon can we get these into languages of other people? How soon can we bless more people with these stories? And I'm thrilled to know next year, it's not actually me, there is a Spanish-speaking Todd Nettleton that will pick up the microphone but they will be able to hear these stories in Spanish next year. The amount of people that I will have to have as a staff to reach to every corner of every country in Latin America, it will be impossible. We, we can't do that. But the radio waves go everywhere. Mm -hmm. We've been wanting to go up to the mountains of Mexico. 
it's hard. We wanted to go to Cuba. They will put us in prison. We want to go, want to go to Colombia and share these testimonies in Colombia. The guerrilla might and will kill my staff. You can't. But the radio can. The radio can. And, and I have several countries waiting. We are very excited and expectant for that day to come sooner than later. We're, we're starting out with 52 of the best stories that we've had on Voice of the Martyrs Radio. We want to get a whole year of programming ready. So that is a process to transcribe those episodes and then translate them and then figure out all those details and then get them voiced and get them translated. So that is something I would appreciate your prayers. If you're listening now, yes, if please. you would please pray for that. And sometime next year... We're going to have Voice of the Martyrs Radio in Spanish. And our goal is to be in 18 Spanish-speaking countries in Latin America and Puerto Rico and the rest of the United States. Wow. So that's something to look forward to. If you are a Spanish speaker, watch for that. Uh, I'd love for you to send me a note and just let me know you're waiting for that. Or maybe you have family members, you have somebody who's anxious for that. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Isak Santiago. He is VOM's regional leader for Latin America. Most of us here in the United States, we don't think of Mexico as a hostile nation. Uh, we think of them as our neighbors to the south. Many of us have visited parts of Mexico. We've maybe been to Mexico City. Maybe we've been to Cozumel. We saw it. it's beautiful. It's amazing. But there is genuine and quite severe persecution happening in southern Mexico what does that look like? Who are the persecutors? Kind of give us a, an overview of what persecution is like in those parts of Mexico. Mexico is huge, 123 million people. And it's as diverse as it comes. Like if you go to the north of Mexico and then you go to the south, you will be confused to, to, to understand. Am I in the same country? Yes. Mexico has been a place where most people go on vacation because it's amazing. Customer service, food, weather. I mean, you have everything you need. But once you get out of those places to the places that we work, that's when you realize, okay, yeah, there are challenges. The persecution historically has come from the Catholic Church. But as you look closer, it's more a mix of the Catholic belief system and something else. And that's something else, uh, the fancy word is Christopaganism, makes it very confusing, makes it dangerous because it's not as simple as, oh, it's the Catholics because it's not. Right. If you look at the Catholic Church in the U.S., it this doesn't look the same. So, so what is happening? And it's that mix of Christopaganism that it's close, but it's not completely the, the, the real deal. And, and it's very dangerous. And yes, we have had cases in the state of Chiapas where this family, the son, accepts Christ, becomes a Christian, a follower of Christ. The dad, they happen to be the catechist of the town, organize the whole town against the son, a king him and the whole family out of the, of the, the town. And they lost everything. And you're like, the catechist, wait, why? And, and it's challenging. I was working up in the mountains of Mexico, and they explained amongst the Cora Indians, oh, hey, this is a celebration. And we're in front of the Catholic Church. This is called the Judea. So what is this? Well, in such and such day, you have two groups, one that runs and one that chases, and the one that chases have whips. And the goal is to catch up with the guys in front and whip them. And that's a celebration. And the local priest is the one that approves everything because that's part of the religious celebration for that town. Like, where is that in the Bible? What? <laughs> and, and it's very confusing to, to, to separate them both, mm -hmm. but it's consistent that where Christopaganism controls, it's very hard for anybody that wants to explore another faith but it's even worse when they want to be accept Christ and, and just become a Christ follower. That's in the southern part of Mexico, and it's consistent. You accept Christ, you're going to lose everything. And the town is going to make sure that you pay a price for that. We have been in towns that is the priest that has called the police and said, hey, yeah, they, they're not from here, kick them out, because they walked into the town with the wrong Bible. It was your average Bible. 
So in those situations, how does Voice of the Martyrs come alongside those believers who maybe have been kicked out of their town? Maybe they have been beaten up by people in their city because they are trying to follow Christ. How, how does our organization come alongside and say, hey, we want to help you? Since every case is different, I'll talk about some examples of what we've done in the past. We have helped people relocate temporarily to what we could describe as a safe house mm -hmm. so that they can find some normalcy. We have to understand they just lost everything. I've never lost everything. I've moved country several times. I've put my life in eight suitcases. I know what it is to have little, yet I have not lost everything. They have lost everything, and it's traumatic. And, and by God's grace, we have partners that have ministered to these people and have walked with them for six months to a year. And once they're on their feet, they move on to a place where they can connect. So we've done that. We help them by food. We had a case where the, the town, they knew they were Christians. They liked their field. They lied to the police. They put dad and son in prison and they stole their land. By the time they came out of prison, they have lost a big chunk of their land. They have lost also the season for harvesting. So they had no food. And the, the way we helped was with six months of grain and six months of food. That way they could start planting. Right. They could get through to the next season. Way for, exactly. So uh, very practical. We've helped people with just basic medical needs. They were beaten up so badly. They just need to go to the hospital and be taken care of. It's always heartbreaking. And one of the cases we helped, he was beaten so hard, he lost his sight. And there was nothing to be done. Wow. He went to specialists and said, like, yeah, it's this happened long enough ago that the eye socket is dry and the other one is in, going in that direction. There's nothing we can do. And, and it just breaks your heart. And, and, and we pray for them. We cry with them. We love them to them because they're family. But their sight will never come back. And, and that's hard to, to go through with them because I'm still okay. I still have my site and I haven't been beaten up and I still have my house. Mm -hmm. What I love about that though, Isak, is the individual attention to individual believers, that there's not a menu and you, you pick whatever is closest to what you need. Our staff is going to come alongside and get to know you and understand what you specifically need for your situation. Then we're going to provide that kind of help to each believer. So I love that personal approach and the the time that it takes and the effort that it takes to get to that point of being able to say, no, this is what this person needs. That's how we're going to be able to help them. We're talking this week on Voice of the Martyrs Radio with Isak Santiago. He's VOM's regional leader for Latin America. Isak, one of the stories in the magazine this month, and again, you can sign up for the magazine. It is free at vomradio.net. One of the stories is about a a place in Mexico that's called the Circle of Silence or referred to as the Circle of Silence. Tell us a little bit about that, wh why that is the Circle of Silence and what it means because there are believers who are trying to go into the Circle of Silence and talk about Jesus. What's happening to them? What are they facing in the midst of that? This is one of the most challenging places in the continent, from Canada all the way to Chile. This place has less than 2% of Christians. You can go to towns of 10,000 people, not one believer. This is a region with middle-class people, people with studies, with jobs, your average middle-class individual. But that completely unreached by the gospel. Completely unreached on one end, and the ones that are persecuted are middle-class people. And... It is so hard to get into the circle of silence because of the control that the church has in these places. We've had the case of a ministry working in all of these places, trying to do evangelism. They are sleeping in somebody's house in, in the yard. In the middle of the night, they start shooting at them. And they had to flee for their lives. And that is something that you drive an hour away, you are in a city with a mega church. It, it's almost mind-blowing that, it, that the two just, could be right next to each exactly, other. Exactly. Exactly. The circle of silence, you can't move into these towns just because you want to. You have to have a reason. And if you have a good reason, they will kick you out because nobody moves here. 
and why, they're suspicious on anybody. Right. And, and, and that's something that you, you will read in the newsletter from Mateo and Elena. Mateo lost his job working for university because they found out he was a Christian. That's it. This is a middle-class guy with, with a degree that now is facing persecution because of his faith. They literally stole his, wiped his bank account. Wow. Because they know who he is. Right. I mean, it's such a challenge to work in this area. And unfortunately, very few ministries are reaching out to this area of the circle of silence. I encourage you to read the story of Mateo and Elena. They pay a very, very high price. Spiritually, this area is dark. It's one of the darkest areas, not just in Mexico, in the continent. And you can feel it. They are cities that have pilgrimages from people all over the world, especially in Mexico, that go worship an image. But it's such a heavy influence that a city of 70,000, if you were to remove that image, the whole city will lose their, their way of making money. Ah, Ye so the Christians are an economic threat. If, if the church grows, it is seen as threatening the economic base of the of the whole city. And that's just to start because spiritually it's one of the biggest strongholds that you will ever feel. If you walk through this city and you go to this church, you will feel like an elephant is on your chest because since 1543, where all of this started in this town, this image has been highly revered and, and people will walk for days and weeks to go there and, and revere this image in hopes of a miracle, in hopes of an answer. And the demonic oppression you feel there, it's terrible. And you can hear and find testimonies of Christians going there. And, and it's it's rough. It, and this is not just your, oh, how cute. It, it is hard. So when you go and you sit down with Mateo and Elena, he's lost his job. His bank account has been wiped out. My natural question would be, why are you still here? Why, why are you staying here? How do they answer that question? What, what, are, what do they say, we're still here because what? That is a very good question. We, we all know the answer that we, we can answer. Oh, God brought me here. But when you're in that position and you answer, God brought me here, that is different. Uh -huh. I know the theory. In practice, it's, it's a different ball game. L let me give you what has happened from Mateo and Elena in the last two months. In the last two months, Elena suffered a brain aneurysm. And this was caused by a rare genetic condition. Wow. So rare that doctors offered to operate her for free because they want to study whatever happened to her. We started praying, and this is something that, as Voice of the Martyrs, in, in partnership with uh, their leadership, we started praying. She healed. Praise the Lord. But the doctors, most doctors were like, well, you're fine now. Uh, we're not sure what happened. A Christian doctor said, this is a miracle. God healed her. Again, we, we have to start looking at things also on the spiritual side of things. Mm -hmm. In the last two months, they have had attacks and, and, and dreams. The youngest dream, warfare through dreams and visions, like really, really bad. They've been threatened outside their house by people with guns just pointing at them. It is hard. They're going through a difficult time. Since we started talking about the circle of silence, the spiritual warfare happening in their lives and in some of the activities that we do has increased and it's palpable. Because for the first time, we are focusing in an area that is a stronghold. Mm -hmm. And again, not just for Mexico, but for all of Latin America more than just responding and giving them stuff. We want a fellowship. And we want to make sure that they know they're not alone. We want to make sure that they know that we are praying for them. When talking to them, they're burnt out. They're tired. They've been threatened. Their life has been threatened. But God called them there. If you receive the Voice of the Martyrs magazine, there is a picture of Mateo and Elena on page 14 of this month's magazine, I want to encourage you, find that magazine. You may want to cut that picture out, stick it up on your refrigerator, 
put it in your Bible, put it somewhere, put it on the bulletin board at your church. But I want to invite VOM Radio listeners to pray specifically for Mateo and Elena, not just this month. I think this this needs to stay on your refrigerator for a while. This is a long-term process that they are under attack, they are suffering, and we want to pray for them. So I want to encourage you to do that. Isak, as we finish up, how can we pray for you in the outreach process in Latin America? What doors are you asking God to open, or or how can we join you in prayer for that? We will really appreciate if you will ask God to give us wisdom. 15 countries where we have staff in two more than we're trying to make our way in, they're all different cultures. And we always are thinking about how can we navigate those cultures and share these testimonies. So we need wisdom. From the top to the bottom, we need wisdom in, in God's direction. We also would like to ask for protection because for the first time in a very long time, these testimonies are being heard across the continent. And, and it is a big deal. It's changing the way many people are doing church. It's changing the way how lots of people are living their Christian life. Consistently, I hear testimonies of people saying, am I really a Christian? And it's not that we're trying to bring condemnation. It's we're trying to encourage them to love God the way he deserves to be loved and to obey him the way he wants us to obey. And that is a threat to the enemy. Mm-hmm. So just pray for protection for our staff that is going to all these churches and talking to all these people. And then the second thing I want to ask you is how do we pray for Christians in places like Central Mexico? We, we talked about Mateo and Elena, but other Christians who are going through the fires of persecution even right, even this week, even right now, how do we pray for them? What are some specific things to pray for? Please help us pray for encouragement. The first thing that happens, and not that it's a bad feeling, but it's natural, is they're discouraged. Mm-hmm. And, and I mean, th- if we just think about Mateo, okay, you lost your job and now you have zero in your bank account. The first natural response is, well, how is this going to work out? I'm naturally discouraged. Yeah, and, and, and it's normal to think, but God, you called me here and I thought it was going to be perfect and it's not. Please pray for encouragement that they will have and remember that moment when God called them and that they will know that they are obeying to God and His voice and that they will just rest in the knowledge that they are in God's perfect will. At the same time, pray for protection because this is a very spiritually heavy environment. This region, Circle of Silence, let me remind you again, it's a very dark area in the continent. So please pray for protection for those serving in the Circle of Silence. There are several missionaries serving in the Circle of Silence. The ones that we are connected with, they're all Mexican. And it's very hard. Mm -hmm. And it's very hard to go to a place where there are no Christians and then to feel alone. So please pray that God will protect them, that God will encourage them, and that God will provide everything they need to do what God called them to do. Amen. Isak, thank you for your message this week. Thank you for your enthusiasm, and thank you for standing with our brothers and sisters in Latin America and and allowing us to share these stories. And personally, I say thank you for making VOM Radio available in Spanish. Praise God, and can't wait for that day to come. And please let us know if you— or your family, or you know somebody that should be listening to this in Spanish because we're working hard and we want to see how far we can get. We can. We want to reach every Spanish-speaking person in the continent. Amen. You can do that at vomradio.net. Right at the bottom of that page, there is a little box to type in a message. Send me an email. I would love to hear from you. I will happily pass these on to ESOC uh, as they come in. Also, I want to encourage you to be back next week. Earlier this month, the world marked the second anniversary of the Taliban retaking control of Afghanistan. Next week, we're going to hear from someone who knows that country well because she and her family moved there after 9-11. Hanali Gronwald was at a UN event on the day when the Taliban attacked her home, killing her husband and two teenage children. Hanali found the grace to forgive the killers and continued to love the afghan people 
You won't want to miss her amazing story. That's coming up next week right here on The Voice of the Martyrs Radio Network.